Good morning, Covenant Church, and welcome to Covenant Church Online. Wherever you're watching from, we are so glad that you joined us. Do us a favor right now and like and share this post so we can get this out everywhere. Before we get started though with this experience, we have a couple of announcements. First, there are tons of opportunities to serve here at Covenant, but there is one ministry that we would like to highlight today. That is the production team. We have been in full swing ever since COVID started, and now we're looking to grow. So if you have any interest in this, have any camera experience, or even if you don't, we will try our best and teach you the best we can. So if you are interested, all you need to do is text CAMERA to 94090, and that will send you a quick text message, which will then prompt you to fill out a form, and then we will be in contact with you as soon as we can. Next, tomorrow, Monday night at 7 p.m., there is going to be a new group that will start meeting here at the church. They will meet every other Monday at 7 p.m. in room 206. The name of this group is Unshackled, Breaking the Chains of Addiction, led by Derek Curl and Brian Lane. If you have any further questions on this class, feel free to reach out to the church office, and if not, we will see you Monday night. Lastly, we know you guys love Covenant Worship, so if you want a little more of them at home, we created a playlist on our YouTube page specifically for Covenant Worship that has plenty of songs such as While you're there watching those music videos, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any new videos that we drop.
I want to welcome you guys back to uh, Covenant Online, and I appreciate the feedback that I got last week and the last few weeks especially. I, I actually believe that the series that I'm doing right now is probably as important as any one we've ever done, and I think it has to do with the vision for the year, God equipping the church in a new way, and uh, and just giving us opportunity to maybe use the knowledge that we've been gathering for years and years and years, and so um, I, I encourage you guys to continue to stay involved and to keep up with what we're doing uh, if you can't be here because I think God's still using you and he's going to build on what we end up doing together eventually anyway. So thank you so much for, for joining in and for your feedback. We're going to continue in Ephesians 6, which is um, if, you, if you're just joining us, you haven't been here in a couple of weeks, you probably thought I just finished Ephesians uh, last year, but the Lord kind of had I me mean, loop it back and we're just going to stay in chapter 6 for about the next five or six weeks. Uh, we're, we're talking about uh, putting on the armor of God, which is really, really important, and going to war with the enemy. And we're going to talk a, a lot more about that armor over the next five weeks or so. Uh, but it would, you know, most people would probably thought, and I actually did too, that I was going to start right straight into the putting on the belt and all the other stuff that we're getting to today. But we had like a two-week thing that I felt like the Lord wanted us to do before we actually even got into that, and that was kind of a preparation thing. I feel like He wanted us to to know two, at least two things before we take off into putting on the armor. 
number one was to know who we are in Christ. And, uh, and the number two thing was to learn really who we were fighting against. So if you hadn't got those two things down, they're very, very important. And I think, you know, prerequisites to actually what we're getting ready to do starting today. So if, if it's your first time and you hadn't actually went back and or hadn't watched those two, I would encourage you to go back and watch last week and the week before because it's really going to lead you to a good place as we take off into into the, what we're going to do today. If you if you got part of it, don't feel like you've actually really re- got a revelation of both those things, who you are in Christ and who we're fighting against. I think uh, just go back and listen to them over and over and over again till you get it. And then when that revelation moment happens, it's going it's going to take a whole different. You'll be able to take a whole different look at what it looks like to put on the armor. So we're going to just take off right into it. We're going to be in Ephesians six. Uh, verses 10 through 18 today. So if you're at home and you got a Bible you want to follow along with us, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm just going to read it anyway. Uh, but I wanted to, to make sure that I, I gave you those scriptures in case you want to look back on them. So uh, verse 10 starts with the word finally. I kind of explained that uh, in depth the last two weeks. Uh, for uh, a new paragraph to start with the word finally obviously means that he was trying. He had, he had some instruction for us before that, preceding that, and, and to start with the word finally means that you had to get that before you can understand or, or actually before Paul could move on to what he wanted to talk to us next. So it says this, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. And there's kind of a insinuation even in that sentence that you're not going to be able to take your stand against what the enemy has to bring against you until you can put on that full armor. Verse 12, he says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. This is what this is what we talked about last week. This is who our enemy is. Our struggle is not a flesh and blood fight. It's against rulers, authorities, powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Talking about where? We learned last week the who, the how, and the where. And that's that's kind of where I got that summary from. Verse 13 says this, therefore. I like that, that it starts with a therefore, because I think he needed you to get those first two things. Who who am I and who am I fighting? Now that you know that, therefore, I want to go on. He's saying, uh, put on that full armor of God so that when the devil, I mean, when the day of evil comes, I like that sentence. Uh, Number one, he didn't use the word if the day of evil comes. He used the word when, meaning that day of evil will come upon you. How, How do you know if we're there or not? Uh, well, in 2 Timothy 3, 1, the Bible says, in the last days, there will be perilous times. If you want to just look at the earth around you, I think we can see that that day of evil has arrived. Now, I also think he's talking about uh, individual situations and individual lives. There are times when the enemy fights you harder or you run into harder battle. But I also think he's talking about it from a broad perspective, meaning The enemy knows his days are numbered, and so that day of evil, those perilous times talking about in Timothy, are here. They're 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 present. We can see them. They're they're constant, and and they're they're coming against not only the body of Christ but the truth of the gospel. So uh, anyway, he says, "Take uh, you may so you can take your stand against the evil one. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. This is our first kind of item." For our uniform, we're going to put on a uniform over the next few weeks of battle, and I'll explain that as we go. Uh, today, we're going to talk about two of them, the belt of truth and the best breastplate of righteousness. Verse 14, again, put on the, the belt of truth around your waist, The breast put the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, in addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one, take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. I like that, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, talking about the the opportunity to battle, with keep keeping that in mind, be alert and always keep praying for the Lord's people. In other words, there's encouragement in that for us to actually not only go to war for our families, uh, but to go to war for our church, for our, our, our Christian brothers and sisters. So let's let's just take today and put on those first two items. I would encourage you too, I, I did this um, this week, is to maybe just pull up uh, some, uh, some pictures, images, uh, just type in on your computer, 
the armor of God and in images. And what you'll find is it's what the warrior looks like when he's put on all of that garb, his, his, his uniform for battle. There's a practical side if you're going into battle for putting on your armor, but there's a spiritual for this, where it pertains to this, there's a, there's a spiritual uh, thing that, that actually is, is practical as well. And so I think when we get into this, while well, we can get a visual picture by looking at an image, what I hope happens to you or in you is that you get a, a spiritual picture as well. It's, it's interesting to me that he starts with the belt of truth. Uh, God doesn't do anything by accident in Scripture. Uh, and in and, and, and Timothy, he says that all of Scripture, Paul explains to Timothy, he says, all of Scripture is God-breathed. All, with, with that God-breathing of Scripture, in other words, I believe from Genesis to Revelation, no matter who wrote it, it's from the Holy Spirit. He, he, he does everything intentionally. When he puts things in order in Scripture, he does it for, that, for a very specific reason. Today, we're going to talk about first the belt of truth. Well, I, God, I believe the Lord spoke to me this week, in fact, last night. I was in a prayer time with him just thinking about preaching this sermon. I, I believe the belt of truth, uh, and, you, and I'll prove this to you, I think, is, is like the hub for the spokes. There are seven things that we're going to talk about over the next four or five weeks that are parts of the uniform, but the seventh one meaning the prayer part. But uh, there, there are seven things that we put on if we're going to be fully equipped, fully prepared, fully dressed for battle. I, I believe this belt of truth thing that he puts first, uh, I believe the Lord spoke to my heart and said, that's, it's, that's like the hub that all the other spokes attach to. And so we're going to start with the belt of truth, which is really, really important. Uh, you'll notice first about the belt of truth when you look at the picture that I'm encouraging you to pull up on the images is that one of the most important parts in a practical way for having on a belt of truth was that it had some, a place for you to, to, to put your weapons where they attach their weapon, their, their swords or their knives or whatever they would carry them with in the belt of truth, all right? So anyway, what, what's, the, what's the value for us uh, 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 in the belt of truth from a spiritual standpoint? The, the belt of truth is his word, as I've already mentioned. Paul encouraged Timothy to understand that this, this word of God that we get to read as our instruction, our roadmap to life, is actually uh, God-breathed. It's important. It's uh, it's, it's, it's something that, that's invaluable to us. And one of the things I believe that's going on on the earth, even as we stand here now, there's, I think there's a battle for truth. I think there's a battle from the enemy against truth. I think we have uh, a number of denominations who are compromising the truth. I think we have a number of Christians in general who are compromising the truth. What he's calling us to by putting on this belt of truth first is that he's saying, I need, I need you to hold the line on this. I need you to hold the line on truth. Don't compromise truth. Whatever God's word, this God-breathed scripture that we get to call our roadmap for life is, is, is the truth. Uh, I, I, I've quoted it about five times this year uh, and last year as well where I was talking. I, I read a little, little quote from Francis Chan where he said, uh, when I'm reading the Word of God, if I run across something that I don't agree with, I must automatically assume that I am wrong. Why, why do I know that? It's because the ultimate truth is the Word of God. And, and I think there's, there's a battle in our nation, there's a, and there's a battle in the church, and there's a battle on the earth for what is truth. And us, uh, we Christians, uh, have to, have to uh, attach ourselves, tie ourselves to the truth of Scripture without compromise, without apology. And I, and I think that's what he's saying with this belt of truth. He's saying, listen, it's my, it's my word. I need for you to, to, to know it. I need you to live it. I need you to read it. I need you to apply it. But I need you to take a strong stand on what the truth of my word says. Uh, his word never fails to do what it is sent to accomplish. One of my favorite scriptures when it comes to God's word is Isaiah 55, 11. I want to give that to you today. It says, Isaiah 55, 11, so shall my word B, that goes forth from my mouth. God given a, a, a prophetic word to Isaiah, talking about his own word. Uh, he says, the word that comes from my mouth shall not return to me void, but it will accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it to do. In other words, it's powerful. God's word is powerful than, a, according to Hebrews, a two-edged sword. There's 
There's power in God's word. Uh, so if, if the enemy can convince us to compromise the truth of God's word, we compromise the gospel. We compromise everything we stand for. If, if all of scripture isn't true and you want to compromise part of it, then you might as well not read any of it. If, if you're going to call yourself a Christian, I, I think our, our first priority is to acknowledge God's word uh, and, and acknowledge that it's truth and acknowledge that it's my truth. It can't be just a truth. It's the truth. And if you're a Christian, you, you, better, you better put that belt on first. Because if you don't put that belt on and you don't have this absolute truth, one of, one of the great battles that's going on on the earth right now is for absolute truth. It, what, what is absolute truth? Well, the only absolute truth that there is is God's word. So if you don't put that belt on first, the rest of the uniform won't work. It won't work like it's supposed to. All right, I'm talking about your spiritual uniform. You, you have to decide now that his truth is your truth that it is the final word, that the moral compass of your life must be built on that truth. That's, that's why it's the hub. That's why it's the most important thing that we put on probably because if we don't have a belt of truth then a, a breastplate of righteousness, we won't even understand what that is. And I'll explain in just a second about that. Uh, so my, my point is, is if, if, if you're going to start onto a spiritual battlefield and you know who you are in Christ, you know who your gifts are, and you know who you're fighting against, the, the, the first thing that you must do is make sure you're walking in this truth. By that, I mean putting on this belt of truth. Now, the second thing we're going to talk about, which is the last thing today, is, is we're going to add to that the, the breastplate of righteousness. All right? Uh, righteousness, let me define it a little bit for you, is an action word. It means to act rightly. Uh, Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Uh, when, you, when, you, when you study that word, you'll find that it's, it's an offensive word. It's a word that has to do with, with the way I act. It's my behavior. It's, 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 it's an action word. It means that there's this righteousness that is attributed to us by being uh, clothed in Christ that gets us into heaven. But there's a righteous expectation. There's a there's this expectation for righteous behavior of those people who have obtained righteousness. In other words, God calls us to a place of walking this thing out real. You'll notice when you see this picture or, or, or most images uh, of this this armor thing that I, I, I encourage you to look up. That when the, when the belt of uh, of truth is put on, the breastplate of righteousness is is then put on. And the bottom plate of the breastplate of righteousness is usually tucked under that belt of truth. And that's important. I felt like that was kind of some a revelation moment for me when I looked at that the other day when I was looking up some pictures. Is that I don't think you can understand what real righteousness is until you attach that righteousness to the truth of his word. The, the uh, Righteousness is not, your, it's, it's, not, it's not defined by you. It can't be defined by the body of Christ. It, it is defined by the truth of Christ. It's defined in the Word of God. So as you understand uh, that we're called to walk out a life of righteousness, meaning to act rightly, then we, we get that righteousness. We get an understanding of what righteousness looks like by the truth of the Word of God. And if you don't have a, a belt of truth on, then the, the breastplate of righteousness just doesn't mean the same thing. Uh, so not only is it a, a righteous uh, it, righteousness an action word, meaning to act rightly, it's an attitude and it's a behavior. It's it's you acknowledging that his truth is truth and walking that thing out. Uh, the third thing I want to say about that that I've kind of already alluded to, while righteousness is certainly granted to us as a gift from God, there is also an expectation for us to honor God with our actions. How do we do that? We honor God with our actions. It happens as we come under the authority of truth and walk it out daily. So you see how these two things are fitting together until you uh, uh, attach the truth to all of this. When we get to the shield of faith, your faith is, is, is changed uh, when you understand that God's word is truth. When that truth is something you start applying to your own life, uh, or whether you're putting on the shoes of the gospel of peace, the gospel is... Is, is not the gospel without the truth of the gospel. It's, it's built upon itself. There's, there's, there, God is God. He's the ultimate authority. 
these two things that we put on today are, are essential if we're going to be warriors for the kingdom of God. If we're going, if we're battling the enemy for in these perilous times for uh, the, the the lives of our children or their spiritual lives, then we we start at a truth that is an absolute truth, that's that's an unwavering truth, that's an unchanging truth. All, the Bible says that all of God's promises are yes and amen. Every single word according to Isaiah 55 that God speaks forth will not come back void. He said they'll, they'll do everything I sent the, it to do. Uh, when you attach yourself to that truth, then you're, you're, you're hanging on to something that's, that's, that's undefeatable, that, that can't be beat, that is always going to be a yes and an amen. And so uh, when you put on that, that, that belt and then you attach uh, uh, the, the breastplate, which in the natural protects your, your main organs, your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, your liver. Uh, there's, there's a protectiveness that comes by act, acting out the righteousness that is described in the truth of God's word that protects your spirit life. You will never be the warrior that God's called you to be until you apply his truth and then you act out in righteousness, you you respond in obedience to God. There's a scripture in, in Acts five that says that God gives His Holy Spirit to those who obey Him. Well, what what do you mean? How do we what, what are we supposed to obey? Well, His Word, the truth of His Word. How does that look in my life? Uh, in my by my acts of righteousness, my my attempts to please the Father, my behavior, my my heart. No, we're not going to go to heaven because we get it all right. But there's an expectation from heaven. That if you if you know that God is God and you know that God's word is truth, that you will, you will respond to that. You don't you don't get to go to heaven because you act right. But if you're going to heaven and God's truth has spoken to your heart, you you want to act right. You want to do the things that pleases the heart of the Father. First John five says that talks about uh, how how our uh, behavior and our attempt at obedience to His word uh, attaches us to Him in in, in a relationship. John 14 says, uh, I think, yeah, John 14 says that if you don't walk out a life of obedience, then you really don't know him. So that's where that righteousness thing comes in. We we touch the truth, we understand the truth, and then we attempt to honor God with the way we act it out and live it out and, and the behavior that comes with our life, the attitude of our heart and, and the, ad- the actions of our life. That's that's the two things that we're, we, we, wanted to, we wanted to start with today. Because if you protect those things, if, if, you, if you're walking in that truth and you understand what God's truth is, you understand that his word is our final authority, it changes the way you battle the enemy. You walk in a different authority. If you act it out, you honor God with your actions, you honor God with your behaviors, it changes the outcome of the battles that you're fighting in because God's favor will fall on you in a way that like you can't even begin to imagine that it would. So anyway... Uh, those are our first two things. I, I'm, I'm going slow on this. It's going to be more of more teachable stuff over the next four or five weeks than it is me coming up here and just uh, screaming and hollering, sermon, uh, you know, preaching. Because I, I, I really think it's important for me to, to walk you through this. And, and I don't know why. I don't know all of the reasons for that importance. I just know this, that God has spoken to my heart that we're in a season uh, that, that he would call perilous times. There's, a, there's going to be a, a necessary requirement for the body of Christ to attach itself to God in a, in, a, in, a, in a deeper, more powerful way, to go more on the offensive, to go, go to war, to be warriors, to, to be equipped, and all those things that God wants to do in us and for us in this season, and it's necessary. I, I, if I could say that in a prophetic way, I believe God is taking us through some necessary stuff because it's necessary. He he sees the beginning and the end. God sees out two months from now, and three months from now, and five years from now, and a thousand years from now. And He knows what we're going to face, and so He's equipping us to face those things. So He's equipping us for battle. So you guys keep hanging in here week after week. I think God's teaching me something. I hope He's teaching you something through me. I hope He's teaching you something through His Holy Spirit, because God is preparing the church for something amazing. And it's going to be fun. I've never been more excited in my whole life than now. So, but, but hang in there, build line upon line and precept upon precept. And let's see where God goes with this. Okay. So thank you for coming today and joining with us. Uh, 
Share this with your friends. Pass this thing on because I think this is important for the whole body of Christ to understand this. The belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness. The first two things we had to put on. Uh, next week, we're going to build on that more and, and, and go even further into this and explain a little bit more what all those other, the value of every single one of those, those pieces of armor are so that we can become the warriors that God's called us to be. All right. You guys have a blessed, blessed week in the Lord, and I will see you next time. Thank you.